The Snapmaker U1 has the opportunity to usher in a new era of 3D printers, potentially. If you don't know what the U1 is, it's a 3D printer by Snapmaker that's gonna have four tool heads, so it can print four colors or four different materials without the need to purge and prime every time there's a color change, reducing a ton of waste and saving a bunch of time. Real quick, if you're new here, which you probably are because I only have 250 subscribers, welcome, I'm Doug, and I make videos about 3D printing and 3D printing related things in my garage. If that seems like something you're into, consider subscribing, and let's get back to the video. Now there's obviously interest in a printer like this because their Kickstarter raised like $20 million, which is insane for a like established company. But I feel like that I, that happens a bunch in the 3D printing world, like companies just run Kickstarters, but that's a different video. So there's obviously a want for these printers. And then you have to consider the competitors, right? You have Bamboo Labs with their H2D. That's a dual nozzle printer coming in at $2,000 without the AMS. And with the AMS, it's 2,300 bucks. They also announced the release of the H2C at the end of 2025. So that's gonna be a seven nozzle printer. They didn't say a price or anything, but I'm gonna guess it's gonna be somewhere around $3,000. And the Persa XL is four grand if you get all five assembled. And I mean, you could build a stealth changer, but if you have no idea about 3D printing, jumping into building a Voron and a stealth changer is gonna be probably a not pleasant time, even if you're good at putting things together. The early Kickstarter price for the U1 was $750, which is cheap. And the MSRP is projected to be a thousand bucks, which is essentially a thousand dollars cheaper than its next closest competitor. If this printer comes out and like blows it, the release out of the water, it's good, people love it, it's printing reliably, I think it's gonna be a proof of concept for kind of two things. One, that people want these kind of printers. I mean, it's kind of evident by how much your Kickstarter raised, but it's different once it releases and you kind of get sales numbers and seeing how many people actually buy. And the second thing is gonna be that they can be mass produced on a reliable level, provided they work reliably, I guess. What could potentially happen, because I'm not a fortune teller and I can't see into the future, is companies like Creality and Elegoo and Flashforge will see that this is something that works and that people want, and they're gonna want some of that profit. So they're gonna start building their own multi-nozzle or multi-tool head printers to compete with Snapmaker. And to take those customers, or potential customers, they're gonna have to have like the same specs or better at around the same price or come out with a lower priced printer. Now I'm not gonna say there's gonna be like a $300 four tool head printer, but I don't think a $400 or $450 multi-nozzle printer or a dual nozzle is super out of the question. I mean, if Snapmaker was gonna charge $750 for their Kickstarter release, I don't think they were taking a loss on it and I can see prices for the four heads at that size kind of walking in around that price. Obviously, if you get bigger bed sizes and things change, that's where prices are gonna fluctuate. But, I don't know, maybe we can have like the 350 by 350 tool head changer for like 1200 bucks, which would be sweet. Everything that I just said in this video is kind of a moot point though if the U1 falls flat on its face. I'm not super up on Snapmaker history, I kinda briefly went over it, but it doesn't seem like they have the best reputation it's kind of up in the air how this release is going to go and how well the printer is going to do. It could put a really bad taste in people's mouth if the U1 comes out and is garbage because people are going to equate multi-nozzle or multi-tool head printers to that because it's going to be the first affordable mass-produced one. I will say that I'm probably not going to buy a U1 one. Well, I'm definitely not going to buy a U1. I'm kind of just going to wishful think and hope that a company comes out with a reasonably affordable, I don't know, 300 by 300 plus multi-nozzle or tool head change printer. Who knows? Maybe like any cubic or Elegoo will come out with like a new carbon that's huge and just has multi-nozzles or whatever it has on it. Thanks for sticking around through my little weird rant. And if you enjoy 3D printing content, consider subscribing. You can also go check out some of my older videos where I do printer reviews and just kind of general 3D printing tricks and tips.